So now we're going to talk about supination mechanics. Now, pronation in the previous video was all about how the arches drop and the muscle tissue and soft tissue lengthens and loads in much the same way that a trampoline will do when somebody jumps down on it moments before they change direction and start coming up. That's the pronation, the loading into the trampoline. Supination is the traveling from that bottom point on up and springing into midair, which is essentially how it is that we walk, we run, we jump. We need to load into the tissue in order to explode off the ground. So we're going to look at supination mechanics. And if you recall, we've got three arches to the foot, the inside medial arch, the outside lateral arch, and over the roof of the foot called the transverse arch. There's three points of contact that should be occurring at all times when the foot is on the ground, giving it a better sense of balance and a tripod-like support. That is the bottom of the calcaneus or heel bone, the pad of the big toe known as the first metatarsal head, and the pad of the pinky toe or fifth toe called the fifth metatarsal head. Now supination is all about reforming those three arches from a pronated space. So when the foot begins to supinate, it's starting from a pronated position. And as the arches lift, it sends the foot into a shortened position. When the pronation occurs, the foot spreads out. So all the bones begin to spread, especially on the bottom inside portion. And then when supination occurs, all those bones start coming back into one another. Remembering 26 bones and 33 joints in the foot, all needing to move at just the right moment, at just the right space in all three dimensions. So with that supination, we'll see that the arches, all three begin to lift and that the contact points of the first, fifth metatarsals and heel stay in contact. As that arch lifts, you can see how that begins to externally rotate my ankle or my heel, that rear foot. The rear foot is dorsiflexing underneath the foot as the front portion of the foot is driving into the ground, creating that arch. So from here to here. As that arch begins building and it's sending the ankle into plantar flexion, which is the opposite of dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, it begins to externally rotate that foot, which is going to cause the lower leg to rotate outward and the thigh to rotate outward. As we begin that outward rotation of the leg, the knee will begin to extend or straighten. Now the femur is traveling faster than the lower leg bones of the tibia and fibula. So if I were to fully supinate, my leg and then keep my, my leg where it is but just rotate my body, you'll see that my lower leg is actually internally rotated at the knee. So when the knee extends, it creates internal rotation in this locking mechanism to propel me from this rigid lever of not only the arch of my foot but my entire rigid leg to give me something to drive off of. So supination causes the arches to lift the ankle plantar flexes, inverts, or rolls inward, and then externally rotates. The knee, meanwhile, is going to extend and internally rotate. The hip itself, from pronation in a flexed position, is going to start extending. And whereas I had an anteriorly tilted pelvis in pronation, I've got to start going in the opposite direction. So I have extension at the hip, internal rotation of the hip, abduction because the pelvis is dropping and I'm rotating into that pelvis as it's posteriorly tilting. That's a lot of biomechanics. Now the average person may get a little lost in these things. Hopefully you can follow along. For those of you trainers and biomechanists that are really into joint mechanics, hopefully you follow that pretty well. But I'll recap it one more time. The arch is lifting up, creating plantar flexion and external rotation down into the rear foot and ankle. Knee extending and internally rotating. Hip 
extending and internally rotating. Pelvis dropping on that side, creating abduction, posteriorly tilting, and the body rotating toward that leg. So these are the mechanics of supination, which are just the exact opposite of pronation. Now remember, there's only two real basic ways in which our legs move. They can either go into pronation and loading our body, or go in the opposite direction and start driving us off the earth into supination. The knee can only extend or flex in that direction. It can internally or externally rotate. The foot has basically the same mechanics. It can go in one direction or the other. So when it comes really down to it, if we can get the supination mechanics, the joint relationships better established, then all the tissue that surrounds those joints begin to learn what they should be doing. And we start to eliminate compensatory movements, reducing the likelihood of injury from non-contact issues. Now, granted, there's going to be moments where we collide with something and hopefully we'll be prepared for it, but many of the injuries, aches, and pains that we encounter throughout the day don't have anything to do with blunt force trauma. It's more about just how we manage our mass and how we manage the way in which our joints move on an unconscious level. So we can actually get a better sense of how we move with pronation as well as supination to give us a better way of understanding what our exercise program or our workout routine really should be comprised on. Not just about building bigger muscles and making you look better in the mirror, but actually getting your body to work in a much more efficient manner that's going to reduce the likelihood of injury, increase your strength levels, and make you a lot more functional.